Secretary of Agriculture is leading a trade mission to West Africa. The trade mission will be based in Accra, Ghana, to help U.S. exporters unblock new opportunities in the West African sub-region. It is an honor to have here with me the U.S. Deputy Secretary of Agriculture, Stephen Sinski, as well as the U.S. Ambassador to Ghana, Stephanie Sullivan. Welcome to New Day. Let me first begin with you, Mr. Sinski. What is the purpose of the trade mission to West Africa? We're really excited, and I'm thrilled to be leading this trade mission. And we're, we're leading the trade mission here. We have over 40 U.S. companies that are interested in doing business here in West Africa. And it's a thrill to be here in, in Ghana, which is the, the site of where the trade mission is being hosted. And really, the U.S. Uh, companies are looking for trade and investment opportunities here in West Africa. West Africa has some of the fastest growing cities, has a very young and vibrant population population, rising incomes, and so we really see this as a growth opportunity uh, for trade and investment. Ambassador Sullivan, how will countries in West Africa as well as Ghana benefit from the trade mission? Well, thanks for the question, Portia. I would say that um, this trade mission is just the latest manifestation of the very strong partnership that the United States has with Ghana and with other countries in West Africa. Uh, and our highest priority, uh, according to our policy priorities from Washington and locally in the capitals, uh, is to improve the trade and investment relationship uh, between African countries and the United States. Um, agriculture is a very important sector for the economies of both the United States and Ghana, as well as other African countries. Uh, and we see this as an opportunity uh, to help um, propel that to an even higher level. Now, U.S. President Donald Trump has the Prosper Africa Initiative. How does this tie in with the trade mission in West Africa? Will this be a win-win situation? Yes, it directly is in support of the Prosper Africa Initiative, where, again, one of the key components of that Prosper Africa Initiative of the U.S. administration is trade and investment. And so this fits very well and is in direct support of the Prosper Africa yeah. Initiative. Ambassador Sullivan, um, the U.S. has been instrumental in promoting trade between the U.S. as well as Ghana. What is the future of the relationship between U.S. and Ghana? Well, it's very bright. Uh, it's strong and deep. Uh, as you probably know, I served here about 20 years ago. Uh, and coming back last December, I've really been impressed with uh, how much more extensive the breadth of collaboration and partnership is across the spectrum. Uh, and certainly agriculture is a big part of that. Uh, and um, we look forward to having other opportunities to showcase, the, showcase uh, this type of connection between Ghana and the United States. Uh, we also have the African Growth and Opportunity Act uh, that is longstanding, uh, which we hope to help Ghana benefit uh, with a more diverse array of exports to the United States. Mr. Senske, this year, 54 out of 55 countries in Africa did sign on to the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement. Uh, in the near future, are we likely to see an agreement between the United States of America and Africa, especially when AGOA ends in 2025? Well, first of all, let, let me say that we're directly supportive of the of the Continental uh, Free Trade Agreement in Africa, and we are very excited about that. And congratulations to Ghana as well for uh, being the the secretariat of of that initiative. And so we think that is very good. We really look forward to engaging uh, with uh, the secretariat here in Ghana, as well as uh, with the nations as you go forward to implement this agreement. We think it's a great opportunity opportunity for harmonizing standards, for bringing down border uh, uh, restrictions that can sometimes frustrate trade. And so uh, we from the United States look forward to engaging as you move forward to implement this and stand ready to assist as well. Ambassador Sullivan, you did early on talk about the AGUA project. What is the U.S.'s assessment of that project? Well, I think one of the brightest areas uh, is in the apparel industry. There's already quite a bit of export uh, to the United States, and these are initiatives that are expanding. Um, but also there's enormous opportunity still in the agriculture sector uh, where there could be agro-processing here, and we're committed to working with um, people here in Ghana who are looking at processing to the standards that need to be in place for the export, whether it's um, 
um, beverages or uh, fruits, etc. Let's now look at the future of farming. By 2050, there will be 10 billion people in the world. How do we harness agricultural technology to feed this amount of people in the world? It really will be a challenge, and I think it really points to the need uh, for innovation. I think that is technology, I think, is going to be the key. We can obviously uh, make sure that we can feed that, that kind of population uh, that is needed by reducing some of the food waste, post-harvest waste uh, that occurs as well. But the real benefits where we'll make the real achievements have to be in adoption of new technologies, whether that's improved seeds, management, uh, digital agriculture. Uh, using advanced farming techniques are going to be key for helping uh, to feed that population that uh, again, we're going to be uh, reaching here in, uh, you know, it is not that far away. Now, the U.S. also did launch the Feed the Future initiative in September. How will this be implemented over the five-year period? Well, in fact, uh, we've had Feed the Future partnership here for quite some time. Um, we reaffirm the partnership going forward in uh, what you might call Feed the Future 2.0. Uh, but this also encompasses these areas such as the Deputy Secretary spoke about with uh, technology and looking at how to make uh, agriculture an attractive career path uh, for the many youth who are looking for gainful employment. Uh, and I, I would echo what the Deputy Secretary said about um, technology making it not just uh, higher yield but also more attractive to young people who are very interested in their smartphones and um, figuring out how uh, different applications can be applied to agriculture. Uh, for example, I'm aware of something similar to Uber for tractors. It's called Trotro Tractor. And a farmer doesn't need to buy a tractor, but they can um, order up a tractor to come and plow the land uh, through the technology. And so that's just one example. Okay. Now, Africa is the only continent yet to experience the Green Revolution. How do we bridge the digital divide between, in agriculture between advanced countries as well as Africa? Yeah, and I think part of that is uh, is through the uh, having an open policies uh, that welcome technology and the scientific advances that come. And certainly, I think Ghana is very forward leaning in that respect. And I think that really has to be key of making sure that we welcome science, we embrace science and technology, and that we welcome that is is I think what, of course a first step. The second thing I would say is that we're interested while we're here promoting trade and obviously are looking for trade from the United States to Ghana. We also have been very much interested in working within Ghana to develop the, the agriculture industry as well. Uh, the State Department, the U.S. Department of Agriculture, we have provided uh, technical assistance and training uh, to work to develop these industries within Ghana. Um, in, the, in the poultry industry, in the egg industry, the feed industry, are just some examples of uh, over the past few years we've invested over 50 million dollars to help build up those industries uh, at the same time that we're interested in exporting as well and so exports and uh, local production are not the enemies of each other they can go hand in hand and as you grow domestic production that also creates an opportunity for imports as well to meet that consumer demand Ambassador Sullivan, talking about the poultry industry, there have been concerns that the local poultry industry in Ghana is not thriving, while there is an increased demand for imported poultry products from the United States of America. How would you react to these concerns? Well, as Deputy Secretary Sensky just pointed out, um, the United States has worked very hard to help grow Ghana's domestic poultry industry. Um, and we are working not just uh, on the chicken side of the equation, uh, but also on the egg side of the equation. Um, so these are complementary efforts. Uh, and I think um, when you look at uh, nutrition, and not just feeding the future, but also nourishing the future. Um, I was on a panel last month with First Lady Rebecca Acupuado and some other diplomats uh, and Nane uh, Anand to talk about nutrition and how important that is and how um, it's very important for young children to have enough protein so that their minds can develop in a way that is not recoverable later on. Um, and so looking at the whole picture of um, not just agriculture but nutrition and, and health 
as a way to provide um, any country with a very strong and uh, productive population that can then contribute to national development. And so these are areas that we're working on um, very, very broadly across the board. In the northern region, I know that the U.S. has a project known as the Advanced Project, mm -hmm. which will very soon be expiring. Mm -hmm. Are there any plans for an extension of the project? Um, we're certainly willing to chat about different opportunities. Um, I would like to mention, for example, that a few months ago we signed an agreement uh, with the U.S. Exim Bank and Ghana Exim uh, to support up to $300 million in loan guarantees for companies that want to grow their businesses um, and import U.S. Uh, machinery, equipment, services, etc. And uh, we think agribusiness really lends itself to this type of an initiative. Okay. With the trade mission currently in West Africa and based in Accra, Ghana, you have buyer delegations from other countries in West Africa. How do they also stand to benefit? They, they certainly do as well. I mean, we do have uh, buyers here from, from a number of countries in, in the region, in West Africa, uh, and so they stand to benefit as well. They're interested in U.S. product. U.S. Uh, products have a reputation for quality. Uh, here in West Africa and I think throughout the continent and uh, this is an opportunity to really bring together the US exporters as well as uh, buyers from West Africa to introduce them to each other so that they can uh, develop relationships and begin doing business. Um, many of the exporters that uh, participate in these trade missions they are the small and medium-sized businesses they're not the big conglomerates but they are the ones that are interested in uh, exploring new opportunities, developing relationships, and in any kind of trading relationship, there has to be based on that true relationship and trust. And this is a way for, uh, for us at USDA to play a bit of a matchmaker, uh, to bring the two together and so that they can develop that kind of business relationship that benefits both, both uh, the United States as well as uh, Ghana and other countries in West Africa. Ambassador Sullivan, what is the future of farming? What is the future of farming? So um, a colleague of mine once said that farmers are by their very nature optimists. You know, you don't get the yield the next day, but you plant the seeds. And I think that um, we are very optimistic about the future of farming, uh, not just in the United States, but also here in Ghana and in West Africa. I'll mention um, our woman of courage this year was named uh, Stella Saka. And she works in the north, helping women acquire plots of land in order to grow nutritious food um, through a program that is in partnership with our U.S. Agency for International Development. And one of the products is um, the orange sweet potato, which is, has, again, a lot of nourishment, uh, not just filling the belly. And I like her slogan, and it gives me a lot of hope. Uh, when she goes in to speak with local authorities about um, uh, advancing the work of the farmers she works with. She says, uh, I come in peace, but I mean business. Uh, and so I think the agriculture trade mission that's here this week uh, definitely comes in peace and also means business. Now, um, talking about technology and innovation in the agricultural sector, there has been concerns about genetically engineered products. Tell us about the U.S. experience and how Ghana can also rope it in. Yeah, the, the U.S. experience with, uh, with uh, biotechnology and genetic modification has been very, very positive. It has allowed, we have developed improved uh, seed varieties that are resistant to pests, that are naturally resistant, uh, higher yielding, resistant to drought, uh, and uh, it has been very beneficial. We've seen widespread adoption of these improved seed varieties that have been made possible through genetic modification uh, and uh, because farmers have found that, that, it, that it's useful to them and it has been accepted by the consumer as well. And so we're very excited about it. We've had uh, biotechnology, genetic, genetically modified crops uh, that have been on the market and consumed uh, for over 25 years in the United States. Billions of meals served around the planet uh, and uh, it has been a very positive experience. 
I think related to biotechnology genetic modification is some of the new technologies like gene editing that is coming as well, where you're using and just modifying a plant or animal's own genes. You're not introducing anything else, but you're uh, doing an edit, just like you would in word processing, where you are making a cut or a paste. They're doing that to genes now, and it can really, I think, has some of that potential to meet that challenge that we began talking the show on of, about uh, 10 billion people uh, by 2050. And you've been instrumental in helping markets label their products. Tell us about the U.S. story and how you were able to achieve this. Yes, yeah, so at the Department of Agriculture, we play a role in reviewing, uh, for instance, the bio, new biotech products as they are about to be introduced uh, to make sure that they're safe uh, and uh, that there's no unintended consequences. And we've reviewed those. And then once they are approved for the market, uh, that has, they have moved forward. And I think it is uh, having that, uh, that the consumers have the trust in that it has been reviewed by the Department of Agriculture, our Food and Drug Administration, our Environmental Protection Agency, uh, that has allowed these products to move forward and be wildly successful. Okay, I'm wrapping up this interview with you, Ambassador Salon. What's the future of the U.S.-Africa trade mission? Um, well, uh, we're ha so happy that the agribusiness mission is here this week, and um, we know that people are uh, meeting each other, mingling, um, looking at opportunities, uh, and we remain behind after they are wheels up. Uh, and we are here 100% to support um, U.S. businesses and help uh, at times be the Ochiami between the Ghanaian um, businesses and U.S. businesses to help uh, boost this trade and investment relationship that is so key to the partnership and the future of our relationship. Mr. Sensky, what do you hope to achieve at the end of this trade mission? We're hoping uh, at the end of this trade mission that we have uh, really introduced and played a good matchmaker in between the U.S. companies that are interested in doing business here in Ghana and those uh, uh, in West Africa and, and the buyers throughout West Africa so that there can be more trade and investment uh, between our countries and so that leads to economic growth and can be mutually beneficial. Uh, we're hoping for really good results from this trade mission. Thank you very much for your time. I have been speaking to the U.S. Ambassador to Ghana, Stephanie Sullivan, as well as the U.S. Deputy Secretary of Agriculture, Stephen Sinsky.